The reason why we have this at Midway Village is actually to honor uh, the men and women wearing the uniform. I'd like to acknowledge all men and women currently throughout the world wearing the uniform that have been engaged in various conflicts, wars, and skirmishes for the last, you know, last hundred years, and specifically our World War II vets. Could you give them a nice round of applause? Overshadowed by the Beltrain UK event that's always in July, and a very, very large event that's on uh, the Eastern uh, Europe, Western Russia front. Battle today is basically three weeks, four weeks after D-Day. It's taking place in Northwest Europe, somewhere in France. We've had spotter planes in the area. You don't see them right now, but the intelligence shows that there's quite a few troops on the Allied and on the Axis side. During World War II, the Germans were known as the Axis of Evil. Also including that group with Japanese and any of their allies. Uh, the reason why we do this, again, is to pay tribute to the greatest generation. I'd like to acknowledge all the men and women that are currently in harm way, harm's way, wearing the uniform and for all past battles and wars for the last hundred years. Can we have a nice round of applause for everybody, and especially our World War II veterans. I mentioned before earlier that uh, about eight years ago when I started doing the narrations of Midway, we were losing about 2,400 veterans a day from World War II. Today it's down to eight or 900. Uh, no one lives forever. Uh, so I was gonna say, and I recommend, if you have a chance to run in, into a, a World War II vet or any vet, uh, give him or her the courtesy, respect, thank them for their contribution to their country. Bubbles and a one shrimp wagon, probably a retreat. Allied armies in Normandy push closer tonight to their immediate objectives, the port of Cherbourg and the railway town of Caen, 10 miles inland. But I think your battle is just there. About 2 o'clock off to your right, you can see some elements of Allied infantry recon, folks. An American flying wedge of parachute troops and infantrymen has cut the main line of German communications to Cherbourg by capturing the town of saint mer 19 miles away, and sweeping on across the main peninsular railway and the highway that runs parallel to it. Communique number eight tonight says again, satisfactory progress. And here's a summary of the situation as Supreme Headquarters sees it. Heavy fighting in all areas, particularly around Caen, where the Germans are making a frantic effort to stop the advance of the British and Canadians. Both sides are using more and more armor. So far, the Germans haven't been able to match ours. A good many of the German strong points that had to be bypassed have now been eliminated. Weather is still foul, but supplies are getting through to the beachheads, although air activity has been cut to a minimum. But one great advantage the Allies possess is initiative. Our commanders know where we're going, and the Germans don't. They must scatter their defense, and Rommel cannot be at all certain that this Normandy landing is the real Allied blow. 
With control of the seas, the Allies can go anywhere they wish. The Berlin radio tonight says Marshal Rommel looks as if he has been losing sleep. Well, that's one German report. It's a pleasure to believe. Large masses of infantry soldiers from the Allied side off to the west coming into the center of the field. Engaged the Looks like the German artillery crew are loading up their guns. Again, off to the west at about 2 to 3 o'clock, you continue to see additional infantry. <laughs> off to your left or to the east, you see a column of German infantry. Artillery moving into the field.
want to get to the German artillery. Typical foot soldier on the inlet side at an M1. Harvey, Grant, Thompson. The main infantry weapon for the Germans was the K98K, MP40, maybe the MP44.
Tuesday's resistance. Thank you. 